Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at OwnCloud, uh, but before we dig into all the different services and things like that, I thought the first thing we would do is look at the uh, administrative tools that are built into OwnCloud so that we can get all the settings right, and then we can start to look at the services. So if you come in here on the web interface, you get logged in, you look up on the right-hand corner here, you can see that I've got uh, my name here. If I just click this little arrow, uh, I get this drop-down menu uh, that gives me various uh, settings and things that I can put together. So let's just take a little tour of that, and then I want to show you uh, specifically how you connect uh, your uh, directory uh, from OS X server uh, into OwnCloud so that all your users show up. Uh, so let's start with the personal here. Uh, if I just click on this, uh, it'll load this up and gives me all of the different settings that I can change. Here I can change uh, the password, uh, my display name if I don't like what it is. Uh, I can fill in an email address here uh, for password recovery. And so if I lose my password, I can uh, recover it by getting an email back that will allow me to link, link to that. Uh, let me just scroll all the way down here. You can see I can set the language if I want. So if I don't want the language to be English, uh, there are plenty of language uh, languages built into OwnCloud. Uh, that'll change the text there for me. Uh, this is the address that I would use to access my files that I put in OwnCloud through WebDAV. Uh, and as we've talked about in the, uh, in the server tutorials that we've done, uh, we talked about how you can access uh, things on your remote devices through WebDAV, and so this would be the actual address that you would put in to use OwnCloud. Uh, there's also a media address here that you would use uh, to access your media, if you've got a plug-in for that, uh, using Ampache right here. And uh, then you've got user account migration. So if you, uh, for instance, had exported your uh, account setup and everything with OwnCloud, you could actually migrate those user accounts back in uh, just by choosing the file that you had uh, exported them to, and then you can import them right here. And then below, it just gives me some information on the version of OwnCloud that I'm using and, and all of that. So let me just scroll up to the top here. Uh, you'll also notice here at the top, uh, it, it actually shows me how much uh, sp storage space I have left uh, on the drive that I've got OwnCloud on, you know, where I've stored my uh, storage folder. Uh, and then I can get at the different applications here to run them on clients. So here's the desktop app, Google Play, or the App Store, depending on which device you're using. And that is a nice thing about OwnCloud is you can use them across all these devices, and they've got plugins for that. I can also show the first run uh, wizard again, which kind of just tells me a little bit about OwnCloud and walks me through a few things if I want to get back to that. All right, let's click up here again. Uh, you also have a users uh, area here, and when you click into the uh, users area, you'll see a display of all your users with their display names. You've got the little edit uh, pencil here where you can edit things right from here. If you didn't want to do it from the uh, personal page, you can do it on this side. Uh, we've got groups uh, that are on here. This is like an admin group. I can add groups from here if I want to. Uh, and then the group admin in terms of uh, who oversees this. And again, this is the group admin. Uh, the storage, uh, I can also change the storage limit if I wanted to. And so per user, I can choose what storage uh, amount and space they've got. So that way, uh, one person won't take up too much space. Uh, and then I can also just do it uh, on a grand scale for everybody, just right up here on the drop-down menu at the top. Uh, I can also, group-wise, again, here's the group drop-down. And I can also cr uh, use create as well to create a new group if I wanted to do that with a login and a password. So a very nice interface to work with users. And as you'll see in a minute as we talk about how to uh, connect it to your open directory, you'll start to see your open directory users in here as well. All right, that's the users area. Uh, then I'm going to skip over apps for a minute. Let me just go to admin on here just to give you a tour of this. Uh, again, you can uh, set your maximum upload size if you want to, and you can change this to whatever size you want it to be. Uh, you can also enable zip downloads so that it'll automatically uh, you know, zip your files and download them. Uh, you've also got the maximum input size uh, for the zip file, so you can change that here as well if you want to. Uh, then you can also, and this is nice, you can um, export your own cloud instance, which will basically create a, a file with all of the data in your particular own cloud instance, which would include your accounts and things like that. And you can choose uh, how you want to export that. Uh, you can export the instance uh, with the user data in the database, uh, just the system files, or just the user files. And again, if you just do the user files, as you saw on that other page, that's how we could then import those user files in a new install. So it's nice that you can get your uh, data out of uh, own cloud, and uh, they'll take care of you that way. Uh, again, they have the updater here, and then you've got the cron uh, job set up here. 
uh, whichever one you want to use. Uh, I just leave it at the default. Uh, you don't need to change that uh, unless you've got a specific reason to do that. And then you've got the sharing options here that you can uh, enable the share API, allow links so that users can share public links into own cloud, kind of like you do with Dropbox. Uh, you can allow public uploads as well so that use other users can upload it to publicly shared files. So if you've got people that don't have user accounts and want to upload, you can do that. Uh, and allow resharing, that users can then reshare those links with other people again. Again, this just allows you for some security. If you don't want those links reshared, you can uncheck some of these things, and it will just uh, secure uh, who can use uh, your own cloud instance and how they use it. And then you can allow users to share with anyone or only to share within their groups that you set up. So these are some of the security features that are in here. I wanted to show you this first so you got a feel for uh, how this is set up and how OwnCloud is put together. Now, let's click on here again. Uh, again, obviously, you can get help or log out. But let's look at the app section here. Because one of the nice things about OwnCloud is that uh, they do have apps that you can install. And so you can add, your, uh, add an app yourself uh, or get more apps. And you can see here all of these in the black area as I just sort of scroll through just a little bit here. These are all uh, applications that are installed. Okay, all these uh, ones that are in black here up at the top. And so you've got, you know, Video Viewer, for instance. If I click on that, you can see that it's already installed. It's an internal app. Uh, it's kind of nice. You can see who created it. And it's enabled, right? Because the only way I can get rid of it is to disable it. Now, anything down below here are actual applications that have not been enabled yet. Uh, but these are ones that you can. You can see you can enable uh, bookmarks where you can actually have uh, save your own bookmarks inside own cloud, kind of like you would maybe with Delicious uh, or uh, one of those other bookmarking services. You can add encryption uh, and external storage support, user support, all kinds of things in here. Uh, open ID backends. You can add a tasks uh, feature where you can have tasks managed within own cloud. Um, and so you can see here, here's some third party ones down below that have been developed, like a journal. Uh, there's a news feed in here, and I believe the news feed actually reads uh, Google. Uh, it takes kind of the place of Google Reader, uh, so to speak. So there's a lot of number, a number of things that you can do. Now, the one that we're interested in uh, that's not in here right now is this uh, LDAP uh, user and group backend. And this is the one that we want to enable because we want to uh, be able to have our directory users attached to OwnCloud and manage them that way. So I'm just going to click Enable. And so it says, OK, it's enabled and uh, tells me that it's all set and uh, everything is on there. Now what I need to do, uh, if I'm going to take a, take a look at that, is I want to come up here now and go to, um, go to Admin. And now that I've come into admin, you'll notice that I've got this uh, added area down here that I didn't have before. Oops, went a little too fast there. Um, I've got this area where I can actually add information about my, uh, my uh, open directory. And you can see right in here with the tabs and everything. Let me just get it just perfect there. Uh, I've got this uh, ability to configure all of these uh, all of these different things. So what I want to do is let me walk you through these. And probably one of the best ways to do that is if I just get everything filled in, and then I can show you uh, how I filled it in and the way that you can set it up. OK, here we are. I've uh, completed filling out all the information here. And uh, one of the things you'll know is it's uh, a little bit in code uh, because we're using some of the uh, open directory language here. And so I'll just explain this for you, but at least it gives you a, a template that you can use. Uh, so the first thing is you pick your server configuration. This is just here because you can have multiple configurations if you want to. So it'll have kind of one, you know, one on there. If I add another one, it'd be two, that kind of deal. So what I do is you put in your host, and your host here uh, obviously would be uh, whatever your host name is for your open directory. And so one of the ways you can check that, let me just pull a server up here real quick, and let's go to open directory. It'll be the name that's right here on your open directory mas master. That's what you'd want to use uh, for your open directory. So let me just uh, put this down here. Now, what you do is put that in there, and then you're going to put a base uh, you know, domain name in here. And again, to do this, you've got to use code. Now, the DC uh, basically just uh, is, is where you would normally put uh, periods in there. Uh, instead of just right in front of here, though, you'd have a period. So again, you know, DC server dot max screencaster dot com. So you would put in the DC equal signs right in there for that. Then when you get to the user uh, domain name, what you, uh, DN is what you're going to do with this is you want to put in UID 
And you want to put in the name of a user that can search uh, open directory. So this has to be uh, somebody who's administrating the server. And what I did was I created an own cloud user to do this. Uh, let me come back into the server app here so you can see. Uh, under users, I just created a, a user here uh, called own cloud uh, just to use uh, in order to be the, the name that would search the server. So let me put this down. So that's a person who can administer the server uh, and has open directory privileges. So UID equals own cloud, uh, CN, uh, that's where it's located. You have to put users because uh, it's under my users groups there. And then you put in again the server's domain name, the same thing that you put up here for the base DN. So DC server, dot Mac, you know, DC Mac screencaster, DC.com. Then you put in the password for this account that's there. Uh, here for the user log, uh, login filter, this UID equals percent UID, you can leave that alone. Uh, down here for object class, uh, you want to change that to be uh, POSIX account, uh, written just like that. And the group filter, you can leave that as POSIX group the way it is. Now the nice thing is, is you can test your configuration here just to see if it's going to work. So I'm going to click test here. And it comes back saying that it's valid and the connection can be established. That's good. That's what you want to see is connection test succeeded, which means that everything uh, is working and should be, uh, should be fine. And then you want to save your configuration. And you can see it has a little green light. It's going to save it, and then eventually it fades away, and you know that everything's saved. So now that I've got that configuration on there, uh, this is the basic configuration. You've got some advanced and expert things in there, but you only need to dabble in those if some of these things don't work here. Now that I've got that, what I could do is come up here back into own cloud, go to users, and all of a sudden what you'll see on my, uh, my users area is now all of my uh, users that I've got, uh, even the ones that are hidden as well. Uh, this is where you'll get to see kind of that, oh, there's hidden uh, user accounts and things inside my uh, you know my server inside my open directory and so you have all these different uh, hidden usernames and things that show up but all of my open directory accounts now are available so that my users now can log into own cloud using the same credentials they would use to log into the server and I can administer them here uh, I can uh, you know choose the group that I want to put them in and so as you can see all of my groups have transferred over from my open directory and so I can go ahead and, and put check marks next to where I want to put people uh, so that I can do that for their groups. Uh, again, this uh, you have group admin over here where I can do the same thing you know, in terms of administration. And so, uh, so anyway, so that's one way to get your open directory accounts connected right up with your own cloud account. And then that way everybody can log in. So that shows you how uh, the administrative piece works. And that's all I've got uh, for this week. Uh, what I'll do in a future screencast is we're going to walk through uh, all of the different uh, the different things that are available to use OwnCloud for, uh, as well as we might look at some more of the apps that you can install. And then we'll also look at the uh, client accounts as well and how it looks on the client side. And you'll see that it looks very similar to how a service like Drop Dropbox would function. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.